good morning everyone and uh, welcome to this lecture this is uh, lecture number 1 and uh, we are going to deal with the uh, photoelectric effect in this particular uh, session photoelectric effect what do you mean by photoelectric effect any idea what do you mean by photoelectric effect Have you heard this term photoelectric effect? Has anyone heard that term photoelectric effect? Yes, sir. What do you mean by photoelectric effect? Can anyone elaborate? No? Sir, when a metal, uh, electropositive metal is hit by a wave which is of sufficient energy, the electrons will emitted from that uh, outermost shell of that metal. Uh, this phenomena is called photoelectric effect this phenomena is called photoelectric effect now once we understand uh, this uh, to understand this photoelectric effect uh, we must understand that how does this photoelectric effect come into being now you might have heard that uh, light has got uh, dual nature have you heard this yes light has got dual nature what do you mean by dual nature of light what do you mean by dual nature of light uh, it shows both wave and particle nature it has got both wave as well as particle nature now there are some phenomena which can be explained by wave nature there are some phenomena which can only be explained by particle nature there are some phenomena which can be explained both by wave as well as particle nature we will see that in the next chapter when we move on to light right now since we are into this photoelectric effect this photoelectric effect is explained by which of this phenomena whenever we talk about light we are talking about electromagnetic radiations electromagnetic radiations em waves and all those things we have just seen electron jumping from one orbit to the other orbit radiations are emitted these radiations now what is the best way to explain this photoelectric effect this photoelectric effect is because of light falling or radiations falling on something and something happening which phenomena explains this photoelectric effect wave which? phenomena the particle phenomena or the wave phenomena explains this which one wave phenomena it is explained by the particle phenomena this photoelectric effect can only be explained by considering light as a particle and that theory was uh, explained or given by whom einstein who explained that uh, theory of considering light as a particle that theory was given by planck and it came to be known as the planck quantum theory which was further explained 
and photoelectric effect were explained by Einstein. What was Planck's constant? Uh, Planck's quantum theory. It was given by Planck. What was Planck, uh, Planck's quantum theory? You know, sometimes you can also call it the Einstein's photon theory. Sir, the energy of uh, um, wave is equals to uh, that wave function and uh, sorry, plus kinetic energy, something like that. Energy of a uh, wave is equals to work function plus kinetic energy. Planck's quantum theory. Is this one? Uh, the Planck's quantum theory says that whenever there is a source, the energy given by this source comes in packets. The energy given by this source comes in packet. And the smallest packet of this energy, the energy of that smallest packet is H into F. Well, what is F? F is the frequency of the radiations emitted by this, uh, by this, uh, by this packet. And the small packet of energy or the small packet of energy came to be known as a photon. So the energy emitted by any radiation is in the form of photons. And every photon has an energy E, which is equal to HF, where H is the Planck's constant and F is the frequency of the photon. In terms of wavelength and frequency, it becomes hc by lambda. And the value of this hc becomes 12,400 Armstrong, uh, electron volt Armstrong unit. So to find out the energy of any radiation, you just divide it by the wavelength in Armstrong unit, and you will get the energy in electron volt. That was the point that we ended the last class. If you want to write the wavelength in nanometers, then this becomes the formula to get the energy of that photon in nanometers. Do we understand this? Yes. This was Planck's, um, Planck's quantum theory, which was further explained in detail by Einstein to explain the effect, the photoelectric effect, and that theory which is just a version, upgraded version of Planck's quantum theory was Einstein photon theory. It said the same thing. Light comes in packets. The smallest packet of light, if this is light, light comes in packets. The smallest packet of light is known as a photon. So whenever light is falling on a surface, it's not a wave, it's not continuous. It is discrete. One packet, two packet, 10 packet, five packet, 15 packet. The smallest packet of light is known as a photon. And the energy of a single photon is given by the formula E is equal to HF, where F is the frequency of photon. Do we understand this? Yes. This came to be known as the Einstein's photon theory, Planck's quantum theory, doesn't matter. They are saying the same thing in the same language, even the language is not different. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. This is the energy of a single photon. If there are n number of photons falling, the energy becomes n times of this value. We understand this. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Everyone understands this. Yes, sir. this is 
Einstein's photon theory. Now, the actual value, so again, you can write this formula in terms of h into c by lambda. If you put the value of h and c in SI units and uh, wavelength in uh, meters, you will get some value. We don't normally use that value. If we convert it into electron volts and we write, we convert wavelength into Armstrong unit, the actual answer is 12,375, which we take it as, a, which we take it as what? 12,400. You can write this as approximately equal to 12,400 divided by lambda in Armstrong unit. This will be the value in electron volts. If you want to write the wavelength in nanometers, then the formula becomes like this. This is Einstein's photon theory. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Shuruat, uh, in the beginning, it was known to be known as quanta. Quanta means one. Quantum, quanta, 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 quantum. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. So we look back. What is a photon? A photon is the smallest packet of energy in which electromagnetic radiation or light can have energy. Light is in the form of packets. Smallest packet is known as a photon, and the energy of one photon is H into F, HC by lambda. We have seen the value of HC by lambda is 12,400 divided by wavelength in Armstrong unit. Do we understand this? Yes. Mass of a photon. Now, remember, this photon, the rest mass of this photon is zero. Now, what do you mean by this rest mass of this photon is zero? This photon does not exist when it is at rest. Photon only exists when it is moving. And with how much speed a photon moves? With the speed of light. A photon always moves with the speed of light, which is the speed of electromagnetic radiations in vacuum or in any other medium. So a photon only exists when it is moving. It does not exist when it is at rest. So therefore, the rest mass is zero. But since we are taking, since we are treating photon as a particle, we can also find out the mass of the photon when it is moving. Now, energy of anything anybody but einstein's mass energy equivalence we know energy is the uh, h uh, m into c squared yes or no yes sir. might have seen this einstein's equation right now this is equal to h into f where h is the planck constant and f is the frequency of the photon yes or no yes sir. from here you can find out from here you can find out the mass of the photon and the mass of the photon will come as I think uh, uh, this thing got cut mass of the photon will come as how much this will come as e by c square, e by c square or hf by c square or h by c lambda yes or no Yes, sir. This mass is sometimes also known as the kinetic mass or the effective mass of the photon. Remember, photon does not exist when it is at rest. Now, since we are taking treating photon as a particle, this particle also has momentum, and momentum is mass into C. So these are the formulae for the momentum of a photon. Remember these, these are very, very important formulae. E by C, HF by uh, C or H by lambda. Do we understand this? Yes. You can expect a question from this. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Then we come to this uh, particular thing. How many photons are emitted? Now these type of questions come. I saw one question similar in one of your uh, papers. The number of photons emitted per second. Now if there is a source Whenever a source is given, the power is given as P, the power of the source, power of the bulb, power of the tube light. And they will ask you how many photons it is emitting per second. 
Now to find out the number of photons it emitted emits per second, and you can do it very simply. The number of uh, photons emitted per second would be simply given by the power divided by the energy of one photon. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Power divided by energy of one photon. Now you can write it as power divided by HF or you can write it as P into lambda divided by HC. A very, very important result. All these. A very, very important result. E is the energy of each photon. So this will be the number of photons emitted by that source in one second. Now, we have already gone across the term intensity of radiation or intensity of light. This is the energy falling per unit area, per unit time. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. So you can write it in this form. Energy divided by area divided by time or power divided by area. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. Last but not the least, this is the intensity or intensity of a source at a distance of r from a point source i told you that in waves also i told you that i think in the previous uh, 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 atomic structure also and here also this intensity will be power divided by 4 pi r square because this power will be going in the form of sp spheres yes or no yes note this down you can expect a question on this then we <clears throat> move uh, to the important points, remember one of these questions may appear in your exam. Some may be a repetition. Photon is a particle of light. It moves with the speed of this one. Everyone knows this. The speed of a photon is independent of, re of reference. You must know that, that the speed of light is not dependent on the frame of reference. The rest mass of the photon is zero. Mass, when the photon is moving, photon is only defined when it is moving. The mass of the photon is inversely proportional to the wavelength of light. That means you can have a question on this. Mass of violet light photon will be more than the mass of the red light of the photon. Um, um, mass of red light photon because wavelength of red light is more than the wavelength of the violet light. We know this. Yes or no? Yes. A photon may collide with other particles. We have seen the chapter of collision. Photons colliding, do you remember that? Yes. So momentum and energy will remain conserved. So it's the same question. The same question of colliding of two balls can be made or collision of uh, two photons. Do we understand this? Or one photon with another particle. Do we understand this? Yes. When photons fall on a surface, they exert a force. Hui. When light falls on a surface, hui, it exerts force on that surface. That force divided by area will become pressure. This pressure is known as radiation pressure. This radiation pressure was the question that came in one of your previous attempt papers. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Now we have seen that when a photon or radiation or a wave falls on a surface, it will exert a force and if you divide that force by the area, you will get the pressure. Do we remember this? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now, in the first case, and let me draw the border line of this first case. This is the first case that you see. Do we understand this? This is the second case, and this is the third case. First case, this is the second case, and this is the third case. In the first case, what you are seeing is, uh, the photons are falling directly or perpendicularly on a perfectly reflecting surface and they are getting perfectly reflected. You can see in this case, you can find out the change in momentum. From that change in momentum, you can find out the force and from that force, you can find out the pressure. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. H here stands for the Planck's constant. Lambda here stands for the wavelength of the radiation that is falling c stands for the speed of light p stands for the power of the source capital n you can see one capital n here capital n stands for the number of photons which are falling small n stands for the number of photons falling per second do we understand this so do we understand this yes sir 
In first case, the formula looks like this. A factor of 2 comes. Why does the factor of 2 come? Because the change in momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. In second case, the factor of 2 vanishes because the photons are perfectly absorbed. Do we understand this? Yes. Third case is one of the cases where it is falling at an angle. So when it is falling at an angle, you have to take that component which is falling perpendicularly. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. And in this case, since it is a perfectly reflecting surface, therefore the factor of 2 comes into the picture. Everyone is understanding why this factor of 2 is coming? Yes. Sir. If you can remember only the third formula, from this third formula, you can find out all the other formula. This third formula is for reflecting surface. For a perfectly absorbing surface, instead of 2 P by C, it will become P by C. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. I'll give you two minutes to note this. Everyone understands what we have written here? Yes, sir. Now, this is a question that is going to make us understand what we mean by all these things. Uh, the intensity of sunlight, energy per unit area, per unit time that we receive is 1400 watt per meter square. Assuming that the mean wavelength of sunlight is 6000 Armstrong unit, calculate the photon flux. Photon flux means number of photons falling per unit time. Do we understand this? Flux, yeah. electrostatic flux, magnetic flux, number of magnetic field lines passing per unit area, per unit time. This is also per unit area, per unit time, but you are given an area of a meter square. So do you understand? How will you find it out? Then you have to find out the number of photons emitted by sun. How much photons sun is emitting? Here we are going to assume that sun is a point object because it's not a point object actually, but uh, the dimension of sun is very small and the distance of sun to earth is very large. Yes or no? So sun looks like smaller, no? You can assume it to be a point object. Yes. Sir. Time starts now. So, <clears throat> How are we supposed to uh, solve this? Uh, you know how much energy is falling per unit area, per unit time. This is the energy falling per unit area, per unit time. You can find out the energy of a photon. How much is the energy of a single photon? Energy of one photon is Hc by lambda. So how much is the energy of one photon? Energy of one photon is 12,400 divided by 6,000. So it will come approximately equal to, let me write it as two electron volts, two point something. Let me write it, I'm just looking for approximate answers. The energy of one photon is 2.2 .2 electron volts. Now I can convert these two electron volts into joules. How much it will be in joules? 3.2 into 10 raised to the power of minus 16 joules. I hope you understand how to convert electron volts into joules. Yes or no? Yes. This is the energy of one photon. I have to find the photon flux, so number of photons falling per unit, number of photons which are falling per unit time. That will be how much? How much is the energy falling on an area of one meter square? So I have intensity. This I is the intensity. I hope you know, understand this energy falling per unit area per unit time. So I multiply this intensity by the area and I divide it by the energy of one photon, I should be getting I should be getting the number of photons which are falling on an area of one meter square, which is known as photon flux. Do we understand this? 
Yes, sir. That's it. That is what you need to find out. So, number of photons falling per second would be 1400 multiplied by the area is 1 meter square divided by the energy of a photon is 3.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. And you will get the answer as I think the answer that I have is 4.2 into 10 raised to the power 21 photons per second are falling on the surface of Earth coming from the sun. That takes us to the next part of the question. In the next part of the question, I have to find out. I have to find out how much photons are emitted by the sun. Now, this intensity of the sun is nothing but power divided by 4 pi r square, where r is the distance of the sun from earth. Yes or no? Yes. So this power becomes I multiplied by 4 pi r square. Yes or no? Yes. I have to find out the number of photons which are emitted by the sun per second. So number of photons emitted by the sun per second will be power of the power which is emitted by the sun. Here it is power which is received on sun, uh, earth. Now we are talking about power which is emitted by the sun multi divided by E1. Do we understand this? Yes. That's it. So intensity we are receiving is 1400 multiplied by 4 pi into distance square 1.49. Let me take it as 1.5 just to simplify my calculations. 1.5 into 10 raised to the power 11 squared divided by the energy of one photon, which is 3.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 16. And voila, we land up with a astonishing figure, 1.2 something, 1.2 into 10 raised to the power 5 photons per second are emitted by the sun. The number of photons which are received by earth for one meter square area is this much and these are the number of photons emitted by the sun i hope you have understood what i meant to say everyone got this yes everyone understood this yes sir pakka sir i'll yes. give you two minutes to note this down then we come to this question just a simple question. The question that I gave you is only supposed to come in J advanced. This is the question which is more likely to come in your J means. I'll give you two minutes to get me the answer. So how will you find this number of photons which are emitted per second? I just want, don't want you to get into complex calculations. Number of photons per unit second will be power divided by energy of one photon. Yes or no? Yes. Energy of one photon will be given by Hc by lambda. This is the formula we have already seen. You can just put this formula. Power is given. Lambda is given. H and C. You must be knowing. You should be giving me the answer fast. And what is the answer? Option C, sir. Option C, that is correct. Do we understand this? This is exactly what we have calculated for the sun. But we also calculated one more thing. How many photons are falling per unit area time, per unit area on an area of one meter square on our... Do we understand this? Yes. In both the cases, we did the same thing. How much power is falling and we divide it by the energy of one photon. Do we understand this, everyone? Yes. This is the next question. An electron and a photon have same wavelength. If P is the momentum of the electron and E is the energy of the photon, what is the magnitude of P by E? Option B is correct. 
P is the momentum of the electron. How do you find the momentum of the electron? Sir, it is M into C. M is... Uh, by... So, for the electron, the momentum will be H by lambda, yes or no? And they have the same wavelength. Do we understand this? And energy of the photon is HC by lambda. Once you find out the value of P by E, I think it is going to come as 1 by C. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes. These are the simple... These are the simplest questions that are going to come and we can expect. The same questions in the examination hall. This is the next one. Remember, you have to remember all these formulas that I've given you. What is the formula of momentum, speed, wavelength and all that. If an electron has the same momentum as that of a photon, of wavelength of uh, 550, 200 Armstrong unit, what is the velocity of the electron? I hope uh, you understand uh, how are we going to find it out? Yes or no? The momentum of a photon, the momentum of a photon is given by H by lambda, yes or no? Yes. Now, this momentum of the photon is same as the momentum of an electron. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. So, that will be equal to m into v. So, the speed of the electron will be given by h by lambda m. Do we understand this? Yes or no? You can just put the values and you will get your answers. Everyone understand this? Yes or no? No. Yes. Yes. That, I think, would be good enough for you to solve any question which comes in this category. Let me now move on to the next concept, which I think is related to the concept that we have studied. We are thinking about the, 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 the dual nature of light. Yes or no? Yes. Light has dual nature. Now... Light has dual nature. There are some phenomena that can only be explained by the wave theory of light. There are some phenomena which can be explained by the particle theory of light. We have seen one of these phenomena, which is photoelectric effect. One more phenomena is Compton effect, which is actually not in your course. Dual nature, light has dual nature. It sometimes behaves as wave, it sometimes behaves as particle, but it cannot behave both at the same time. So, depending on the nature, depending on the circumstance, it may behave as a particle, it may behave as a wave. And I think I have told you in that chapter on wave and particle, that wave, chapters on wave, I have told you the difference between a wave and a particle. Don't know whether you remember it or not. But, once we observe that um, that what light can have dual nature, there was a scientist who started to think what can everyone have both nature? When I talk about everyone, I mean matter. De Broglie, De Broglie imagined that if light can possess both wave and particle natures. Sometimes behave as wave, sometimes behave as particle. Matter must also possess both nature, particle as well as wave. The problem with particles, I am a particle, electron is a particle, this pen is a particle. Whenever a particle is moving, it has momentum. Whenever a wave is moving, whenever a photon is moving, it has momentum. And we have seen that whenever this photon is moving, it has momentum. We can find out the wavelength. The momentum is related to the wavelength. And there comes the concept of de Broglie 
wavelength and de Broglie hypothesis. What is de Broglie wavelength and what is de Broglie hypothesis? I've already given you the de Broglie uh, hypothesis. What would be de Broglie wavelength? So any particle which is uh, moving with a velocity v, it has a kinetic energy, yes or no? Yes. That kinetic energy is half mv square. So we can write it as p square by 2m, yes or no? Yes. From here, you can also understand the relation between p and e. p is under root of 2me, yes or no? Yes. Now we have seen the relation between photon, its momentum and its wavelength, yes or no? Yes, sir. And now, since this particle which is moving also has momentum, we can associate it with a wavelength. And this wavelength, lambda, which is not the wavelength of a wave, this is the wavelength of a particle. It's known as the de Broglie wavelength. And this concept is known as matter waves. Waves created by matter. Do we understand this? Or this has gone above what it's saying bye bye? We understand. As you can see in this uh, concept, this uh, wavelength associated with a particle is inversely proportional to the mom uh, momentum. H is constant. It is inversely proportional to V. If the mass of the particle is constant, it is inversely proportional to root over E. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes. Give you two minutes to note this down. Note it down fast. Now here we can see that uh, we have already seen that the de Broglie wavelength associated with a particle is H divided by under root of 2Me, where E is the kinetic energy, yes or no? Yes. Now, for a charged particle, if there is a charged particle, this kinetic energy of this charged particle, we are going to accelerate this charge with a potential difference, yes or no? Yes. Sir. So, energy of this charged particle will always come as Q into V, where Q is the charge and V is the potential difference, yes or no? Yes, sir. That gives us this legendary formula of energy associated with a charged particle. And the energy associated with a charged particle is given by H divided by root over 2mqv, where V is the potential difference, M is the mass, Q is the charge, and H is the Planck's constant. If you put the values in different, different cases, you don't have to remember this. If you just want to write it for your... Uh, Academic purpose for an electron, the value comes as 12.27 for proton, 0.286. No one is going to ask you this. You just have put the values there. For a neutron, which is an uncharged particle, you have to find out the energy of this uncharged particle. How much is that? How much? You, because you cannot charge it by a potential difference. The last but not the least, thermal neutron, which is charged by... The temperature, uh, the, which gains its energy by the temperature, it will be proportional to under root of T. What you have to understand is a, for a charged particle, it is inversely proportional to root over V. For a neutron, it is inversely proportional to root over E. For a neutron, thermal neutron, it is inversely proportional to root over T. Do we understand this? The numerator, you may not remember because it is just calculations that you have done. I hope you understand this. Yes or no? Yes. I gave you two minutes to note this down. These graphs are more important because these graphs are going to come. How does lambda, wavelength lambda, changes with momentum? The graph is rectangular, hyperbola. Do you understand this? Lambda is inversely proportional to P. The graph of lambda with 1 by P, the slope is equal to H. The graph between lambda and V for other different, different masses, the Upper one represents smaller mass. The lower one represents larger mass. Do we see this? Yes. Here it is like this. Lambda with 1 by V. Lambda with uh, root over E. Lambda with 1 by root over E. So you just should remember this. The values are not important. What is important is this. How does it vary? Do we understand this? 
Yes. Questions are going to come from here, not from that values. Then we must know the. Have I shown you this one? The order of magnitude of wavelengths associated with bigger particles is very small. I, have I have I told you this point? No. If I have a truck moving with a velocity, the momentum of the truck and the associated wavelength, because h is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of minus 34, the momentum of the truck would be very small. The momentum of a train, if I start to run, my momentum will be very small compared to the value of h. And therefore, for macroscopic, bigger bodies, the wavelength is very small and therefore we cannot see that wavelength. It is unobservable. But when the particles become small, such as electrons and protons, then the wavelength becomes substantially more. And that is why we use this phenomena of matter waves with small particles and not with big particles. Because for big particles, the mass is big, momentum is not so big because they cannot move very fast because they are heavy. And therefore, for macroscopic properties, the for macroscopic particles, the wavelength is very small. Therefore, if even if I run very fast, I'm not flash, I cannot go very fast. The wavelength associated with me will be very small. But if I become an electron, I can move very fast. The wavelength becomes higher. And therefore, we associate this matter waves with electrons, protons, neutrons, and small particles. You can also find the wavelength of bigger particles, but that wavelength will come very small. Do we understand this? Yes. Well, then, uh, these are... <clears throat> Some of the important points of this, you may not have to know all of them. Um, you just have to know the important one. They are not electromagnetic in nature. Do we understand this? Yes. Uh, the Broglie wavelength does not depend on the charge. When we say charge, what it means that you can associate it with a charged particle, you can associate it with an uncharged particle. You can associate De Broglie wavelength with electron, proton, neutron, this body as well. Do we understand this? Yes. Practical observation is only possible when the wavelength is big. For bigger particle, the wavelength is very small. You cannot observe them. Do we understand this? Yes. Electron microscope is a thing that works on de Broglie waves. They are asking questions these days based on uh, knowledge. So that's why this question. The electric charge has no effect. I have already told you. The rest of the problems you may not note down. Matter waves can propagate in vacuum. Their speed, the phase velocity, depending on their uh, mass and momentum and wavelength, they can practically have a speed greater than the speed of light. Do we understand this? Yes. Just note down the important points and with this we are done with this uh, topic of uh, photons, the dual nature and matter waves. I will give you some questions based on this as well. They can ask a question of de Broglie wavelength and matter waves. Most of the questions that are associated with photons are asso associated with matter waves. And therefore, I take this matter wave just with photons so that you can relate all these things together. Do we understand what we have done in today's class? Yes, sir. Okay, then we will uh, move ahead with the questions of matter waves and we will try to wind up the actual chapter and the name of the actual chapter was photoelectric effect. We have seen light has got dual nature, light consists of photons. We are now concentrating on photons. So what these photons are going to do when they fall on a particle on a surface, obviously they are going to exert force. We have already seen that. Apart from exerting force on that surface, they can also do some more things. Those things we will see in the next class. That is tomorrow. Photoelectric effect. We'll deal with photoelectric effect. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye. If you have any doubts, please come.